we're just going to start it here. Uh, I'm just going to pause. The okay, that's great. Because what I really, really want to make sure we do is if we get something that's of more interest to you guys than what I've already decided the content is going to be, as everyone knows, I am happy to take a road trip and I will be self belling today. I've got my bell and um, you've got it. There's a slide deck. You're going to get a copy of the presentation. Uh, I'll put it into the into the meeting in a second. Actually, what uh, I'll just dump it into the chat right now. Um, but you've got a copy of the presentation, so you're you're already going to have what the content that I thought you were going to want is. But we could make the oh, I can't upload to uh, to the chat. Sharam is going to send you out the the PDF of the presentation later. And so if something really is of interest to you and we want to go off on a little bit of a road trip, we can because you've got all the content that I thought might be important. So why don't we just go ahead and get started and I will share my screen and Shram, you're just going to keep an eye out if somebody really wants to ask a question and asking a question in the moment is also great because it keeps it relevant and, and keeps it uh, me from just the sound of Kelly's voice going on and on. And on, and on. <laughs> So uh, let's make this as interactive as we can. So we're going to create, oh, let's go back to why we're going to create an ideal tech stack uh, in harmony with your ideal client profile, which we did a month ago. And we're going to do ideal um, processes a month from now. And so this is, of course, presented by Financial Sense. And uh, hey, Sharam, <laughs> Financial Sense. And I am going to say that uh, I, I love lots of apps. Uh, we talked about this yesterday, Sean. There's just so many great apps out there. I love them and so many of them are suited to different people. I'm not going off on a tangent here. This is part of it. We're gonna develop an app, app stack. And you know, you, you want this feature and you want that feature and yada, yada, yada. And um, I personally, and this isn't a sell for, for Sean, this is a true story. I had not added anything to my workflow app stack in four years. And then uh, I was mucking about in it with my daughter-in-law, who's also a bookkeeper. And we both fell in love with, with financial sense. And then my, yes, and my, my darling daughter-in-law, who has questionable taste in men, she <laughs> uh, is doing some work with another firm. She's contracting. And uh, she introduced her. I did. And then she seconded me uh, financial sense to another firm. And Sean, could he be any more in love with it? Daniel, <laughs> Daniel is also yes. fallen. Yes, he has he also him. fallen in love with it. And uh, so away we go. That's uh, it's kind of fun to have found something that you love because there are so many great ones. And we're going to talk about how you decide which ones you're going to narrow it down to. Yeah. So we're going to define how an ideal client profile will guide you to creating your ideal tech stack. We're going to define the elements of an ideal tech stack. We're going to create an actual ideal tech stack. You're going to start to write some things down or you're going to garner some thoughts on it, whatever it may be. So with your ideal client profile, some of you have done it through this webinar series a couple of weeks ago. Some of you have done it in personal coaching with me. And some of you attended the CPB Canada. I know some of you are here one um, on creating. And I'm sorry about that one. I That one was not my, my best moment, but away we go. Um, you've created your ideal client profile. So what you've done is you've defined the desired outcomes. What is it that you want the service that you want to provide to your client? If you've defined the ideal client, you also know what the outcomes that you want to provide them with. That means you've defined the work. So you've defined the client, which means you've identified what the outcomes you want to achieve for them are. And then you've defined the work that you need to do to achieve the desired outcomes. You also need to communicate properly in order to get to those desired outcomes. And communications are a big part of your tech stack, how you're gonna communicate uh, consistency. And I wanna go off on a little bit of a story on consistent communications and having them built into some programs in a certain way so that they are always the same. Um, I have dogs. 
And in general, dogs listen to men better. This isn't a sexist thing. It's just that men have deeper voices and they command more respect for dogs, except for my dogs. They don't listen to my husband very well because A, he's got 25 nicknames for them. My dogs don't even know their nicknames. And he has 25 different ways of calling the dogs back. So the recall with my husband is horrible. The way that I call my dogs makes their recall wonderful. I say their name and I say the word come. I say their name and I say heal. I say their name and I say stop. And the dogs respond to me because I am completely consistent in how I am communicating with my dogs. So having an application for your communication so that everything is consistent means your clients are more likely to respond in the way that you want them to. I bet you all wondered where I was going with the dog story, right? Um, the tech you choose is going to have to have the features and solutions you want to create the outcomes, to get the work done, and to communicate properly with your clients and with your team. If you have team, you also just can't be willy-nilly going off and not having consistent communications either. Okay, defining the elements of a tech stack. Sorry, just give me two seconds. I'm trying to get into my uh, my chat. I can't see the chat, but I can see that there's some chat going on in there. I'm, I think I need no, I'm monitoring it. Um, no, no questions yet. I would, I would like to chime in, Kelly. Uh, yeah. If you go back to that original slide, you know, talking about, like from our standpoint, it's a little bit different from like what accountants and bookkeepers face. But from our standpoint, really defining our ideal client profile was a huge benefit for us because one, it helped us really decide which features we were gonna build. You know, when we first started, we were a small team. We didn't have a lot of resources to build every feature out there like you see in Asana or ClickUp, which are great solutions. But since we focused and said, we wanna target accountants and bookkeepers, we, right. could build, we could really focus and build the right features we need to deliver value quickly and effectively. Um, and it also helped us really decide how we wanted to communicate with our customers. So in terms of customer support, you know, if something's wrong with the system or if you can't access your documents for some reason, we, we decided the customer support has to be quick, you know, response times within, you know, 30 minutes, because if you have to wait two or three days to, to get something fixed, you could miss deadlines. And that's important because we realized in this industry, customer support, quick customer support is, is uh, essential. Uh, yeah. So it really helped us define how we can serve and the types of work or features we could offer and really be successful at that. Yeah. And, and to me, uh, I mean, I'm only hearing good things about your customer support. So, <laughs> go. and you and I, of course, talked about your ideal client profile <laughs> and I love how defined it is. That's awesome. Um, okay. Yes. This will be recorded. Um, we're sending it out to them with this, with this, along with the slide deck. Okay, defining the elements of an ideal tech stack. An ideal tech stack has to solve an urgent need or the tech that you choose has to solve an urgent need. They have to have the features you want to achieve the desire, de desired outcomes. First day with the new, new teeth. The cost versus benefit exists. You know, pricing yourself out of the ability to have tech, it's a real thing. So uh, don't be, I, I, but I'm, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go off on a little bit of a lecture here, though. There's a difference between being able to afford a software uh, versus what you need out of that software. But one of the things that really drives me insane, like insane, is when people say they, 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 that they want it for free. And then there is a free offering, but then they don't like the features that the free offer has. So even if it's free, and it doesn't have the features you want, the ROI still isn't there because you still have to manage that tech and it's not doing what you want and you're not happy with it. But mm -hmm. I mean, free is you get what you get when it's free. So you want some stuff at the high end, but you know, there's, there's a cost ratio to all of this, especially if you want the app to A, stick around and B, develop. These aren't volunteers. Um, you like working with in, in the tech. UI, UX is incredibly important. There are two applications that are very similar in what they actually do. So one of them is 17 hats and one of them is Dubsado. They, 
they do essentially the same things. They've got essentially the same features. They interact completely differently in them. So you need to make sure that you, you like working in the one that you have picked or A, you're not going to use it successfully. You're going to be frustrated. You're going to blame the app, not you. Um, and you're not going to use it. So again, there's no win. So make sure you actually like using it because a lot of these apps, you're going to be in them all day. And the other example, obvious example is Calendly and Acuity are incredibly similar. Uh, my husband chose Calendly. Now he's on 17 hats for his thing, but I chose Acuity and we did a head to head thing and he just liked Calendly better. Cool. Make sure you like the app. You're going to be working in it. Uh, make sure that you understand the app. Are you actually learning how to use it? Are the problems that you're experiencing your fault or the app's fault? If they're the app's fault and you're never, you're never going to understand how this app operates, then it's not part of your ideal tech stack. Uh, you are not overwhelmed by your stack. So if you have all kinds of applications and some of them are tending to do some of the same things and you could rationalize that down to just a couple of things that will keep you from getting overwhelmed if you just keep adding and adding and not actually using all of the features that they have well then that you're just going to be overwhelmed by your stack that is no way to create an ideal tech stack and you know diane i don't even know if i put this in uh so diane says a good thing do they offer training so many of the apps have five fabulous training and nobody uses it and then they are upset when they don't know how to use it. Um, do they have training is such a good one. So make sure that you have the ability to know how to use that application and uh, you know the app offering it is key Diane, no doubt about it. Uh, do they integrate with each other? And who do you need to integrate and why? That is always something. Draw your chart of how you you want your apps to play together. So for uh, those of us that are in the QBO world, we probably in the end, if there's going to be a financial function to this, you want it to tie in to QBO. So like Financial Sense actually pulls your item list and you can bill your time and you can run your payroll using that time. That is all integrated naturally within the app. Do you want the contacts to sync together? That's always the big one. When you're looking at uh, at, uh, some of the integrator apps, one of the first things that when you're in beta with them is that they are going to test you on what other contacts do you want to have. So do you want to send your contacts around to different things? So how much integration do you actually need? And how much integration are you actually willing to do? So I'm going to give you some examples of tech stacks afterwards. And those tech stacks, some of them require you to tie them all together. They work great. But you have to manage a lot of apps and you have to be familiar with setting up integrator apps like Integromat or Zapier or whatever it is to make sure that every one of those apps is talking to each other. It's wholly possible and it's absolutely fun to do it. But if that's not your gig, then that is not your ideal tech stack. And so, again, we're going to take a look at that in a little while. Um, the support, development and cu culture of the app align with you. I have a few apps that I absolutely love their culture. It's, it's fantastic. And any, I, and again, it's, it, it's Sharon's <laughs> webinar. So I am going to talk about the good things <laughs> in the financial sense that, um, can, are they relatable? Do they listen to you? Do they engage with you? That's, that's, that's fantastic when they do that. Um, some apps it's, it's, it's like you're just a number to them, but you have to decide. So I'm not going to name names here. I have a couple of apps that I actually love the app itself. I don't love the culture or sometimes the way they don't make me feel like a human. And then I have an app that I absolutely love, love, and their culture was everything and it was fabulous, but they stopped developing. And so the culture, what isn't enough to keep me there. So it's a, it's, you can see it's just a part of everything that you need. 
So there has to be a really compelling feature UI UX component or need for an app if you don't love their culture. So if they don't have a compelling reason to engage you, then um, and you don't love their culture or how they make you feel, then that's also time to move on. So it's really a combination of all of these things. Um, mm -hmm. And again, just it's a combination of all of these things. And I'm not sure if any one is more important than the other. I mean, to some people they are, but you really have to take them all together. Um, what do you need? So how are you going to define your tech stack? So you've got two elements as accounting professionals, we've got two elements to our business. So we've got the, the business that we're running itself. And then we've got the, the work that we're doing for our clients. So we're taking a look at the app stacks in both directions. So in your business, what's the biggest time suck in your business? What's a manual menial process that an app could do? And what's the biggest hiccup in your business systems? Identify those and then start to sketch out what you need to solve those problems. And I don't mean to go all negative Nelly here and go with the problems, but it is easiest to problem solve the things that aren't going well, as opposed to this is going great. Well, that doesn't help with the tech stack because you don't need anything to solve going great. So uh, in your work, what's the biggest time suck in your client work? What are you doing that is just a big time sucking hole for you? What's a manual medial accounting task an app can do? And totally at the front end, we all know that that's the document management apps. Mm -hmm. What's the biggest hiccup in your account? accounting work? Is it not meeting deadlines? Is it that your client isn't happy with their outcomes? Oh, that is the next one. Um, so what, what are the biggest hiccups? You don't know who's next, who's on first, and then who's the next player. You don't know when it's your time to come to plate. So what are the biggest hiccups in your accounting work? And what do your clients want better outcomes on? Everything we do should start with client outcomes. What are you doing to make them happy, to make them love you? What are you doing to make your client a five-star client? Because if you're not making your client happy, if you haven't chosen the ideal client properly, then they're not your five-star client anymore because they either don't understand your systems and they're not following the bouncing ball, you're not achieving the outcomes for them. So they're getting grumpy with you. Whatever the case may be, you are not going to have a five-star client until you rise to the challenge of what outcomes do they want you to do better. Boy, that sounded like a lecture, right? <laughs> um, so to run your business, there's a number of things that I consider absolutely essential to running your business. Lead capture or information gathering is important. When I talk about information gathering forms, I'm talking about a super quick uh, prospecting form to vet your ideal client, hone in on who it is and save everybody else the heartache and time of going down a path for somebody who's not going to fit, who's never going to be a five-star client. Um, information gathering forms so that you can draw in um the information that you're going to need to work with them so now you've chose you've done information gathering on vetting the client you've got the perfect client now you need to get the information from them how many bank accounts do they have yada 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 and then as you move down the cycle when you go to re-engage them you're probably or you i i always do uh, i do a, a happiness survey H how did things go uh, I give them an opportunity to tell me how they felt the relationship went and how the outcomes were. If you don't ask them, you may not know how they feel about their outcomes, how they feel about their relationship with you. Uh, a CRM so that you can capture the information on your client, keep the important notes and make sure that you, you have a, a, a full picture of what your each and every client looks like. A contracting app of some sort. Now that can go back to the information gathering. You don't need to over, over complicate the contracting. There's a point where you need something to get, say the report signed for year end or T1s or whatever you're doing. I'm not talking about those apps. I'm not talking about the signature apps. I'm talking about contracting in terms of this is the scope of work and yes, I, I agree to it. 
And you can actually do that with a form builder using yes, no. And some actually have signatures, uh, Cognito Forms for one has signatures available. So you can, you can build out quite, quite a process with your information gathering forms. Getting paid, we all need to get paid. So make sure that you have a way of getting paid, whether that is Square, whether it's QBO, uh, how are you gonna get the information in there to get paid? Martha, I love PandaDoc as well. That's what I used to get my report signed. Exactly, PandaDoc's the bomb. Um, sharing. So how are you going to share with your team? And how are you going to share with your clients? Where are you gonna have them upload documents? What are you gonna have them, how are you gonna get them to get the information to you to get the work done? Scheduling, if you don't have an online scheduler directly after this meeting, go get an online scheduler. It is the number one time saving thing. I swear, I swear, it is the greatest thing. If you go back and forth on an email uh, and you're only doing say three meetings a, a month, let's just take three meetings a month, that could still suck up 20 minutes of your month that you could be hanging out with your dogs or drinking wine on the dock. Uh, communicating, how are you gonna communicate to your team, to your clients, whatever it may be? How are you going to manage your projects? And our clients are a project, but then we also have projects for our work. So our, our client, I mean, for our business, our clients are a project. And then our, our let's say, rebranding is a project in our business. Those are two very different kinds of things. And I'm going to digress a little bit here. I think this is later in the slide deck, but I can't emphasize this enough. If you want a project management within the accounting space, the best way to make it simple, to make it work for you, is not to fight with some of the systems that aren't client centric. And what I mean by that is, you've got Trello, you've got Asana, you've got ClickUp. They actually start with the task and you have to fit the client in. And that's fine. A lot of people, are doing fine with that. But it's a lot of work to take a task management application and make your client the most important thing in it. We have a lot of great accounting based workflow task management, project management apps. Financial Sense obviously being one of them. And it starts with the client, with the project, and then you add the tasks, you add the communications. It is such a different way of thinking of it. And if the client is what you are, you are everything that you are doing in the work for your clients is about the clients and about the outcomes. It is so much more effective to use something that starts with the client. Now I'm using ClickUp but I am only using it to tell Alexa over here to send some tasks over so that I can, there she is, so I can get them out of my brain. And then I can go in there, I'm, I'm rebranding right now. And uh, I'm working with uh, somebody who's building out my website stuff. And we have all of that in, in, in ClickUp because it totally makes sense. That's just to manage that, that project and away we go. There's no client involved. There's nothing but me and my business in there. And I can segment it around all of those things. But if you want it to be completely client centric, start with a client centric accounting application. Whew. Okay, uh, the other element is workflows. And of course there's tasks. Um, and you're going to need a way of delegating. So uh, if you have a team at all in any way, and even if you don't have a team, how are you going to delegate? So for me right now, I'm delegating off all kinds of things to the, to the woman who is doing my rebranding. Hallelujah. So you've got to delegate things. Form building, engage, info, gather, vet. We, we talked about this. But I just want to show you, this is my personal favorite uh, app for this. This is Typeform. And this is one that is built by Financial Sense. And actually, I, I <laughs> guess I didn't see it in, in action. So Sharam is probably going to get a lecture from branding on me. <laughs> uh, so this is actually uh, the one uh, for Financial Sense. And uh, but uh, so you need to brand that better, young man. 
I'll do better next time. Oh, and oh, dot CA. But this is type form. And you can see how smooth this experience is. What keeps me up at night? Well, just the wine. Um, <laughs> so this is what the type form experience looks like. When we're talking about outcomes and making your client feel good and making them feel engaged and communicating well, look at this user experience. Google Forms is great too. And it's so simple to use and it's free, all of those things. And you can build it into sections so that they don't have to see too many things and it slides into the next section and that's great. And you can do if this, then that, and you can do all kinds of things. In type form, you can take it next level on what's called um, conditional logic. So if I put my name Kelly in as the first thing for the rest of the thing, occasionally you can say, hey, Kelly, so nice of you to be here. So that's, that's conditional logic. Um, so find an app for that. Uh, a, uh, on how you are going to engage, info gather, and vet your clients. Uh, gratuitous dog photos. Yes. I was going to say I, I want to re hit on type form. I really do love that solution for us. Gathering info from our users is the most important thing and the biggest focus of what we do. And it kind of hits back on what you were saying. You know, getting feedback on what's working, what's not working, what do we need to be doing that we're not doing right? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, you don't always know. Um, and the more insight you can have in your customer, the better service you can offer and the faster your business can grow. Uh, so anyone that's worked with us in the past, you know, we religiously listen to our users um, and having surveys is an amazing way to get that feedback, get those yeah. insights, but creating an easy way to do it like Typeform or some of the other solutions out there can really help you get more insights because it can be hard when people are busy to get, to have them take some time to move through a busy form yep. so, uh, so the more the more engaged they can be in in that form the the more likely they are to fill it out i filled one out the other day that really wasn't i, I it's not even something i care about or anything but the form was so beautiful but of course i've got a form problem so that's probably why and this was part of building your ideal tech stack so my front end piece 17 hats obviously has a form builder in it. I say obviously, why I think it's obvious, I don't know, but it does have a form builder. But I, I, I only use that to keep the information that I want directly into my CRM, for example. I love, I love Google Forms, but I particularly love Typeform outside of, of that, where I don't need the information in the client CRM. So, you know, the same type of application or feature can still be used in different ways. And then, you know, you take it next level, with Cognito, I don't love the interface or the client experience at much, but it's HIPAA compliant and you can have signatures and, and encrypted fields. So you really need to decide what features are going to matter to you. Uh, okay. Managing client accounting services. Apparently we're not supposed to call it bookkeeping anymore. It's client accounting services. So this is when the things that I think are the key, uh, apps that you're going to need. It's accounting program, kind of important for accounting. Um, receipt capture OCR publish. You can go with something that just receipt captures. That could be Dropbox. It can be whatever. But when I talked about menial time sucking tasks, having something that takes the document, OCRs it, sucks the tax component out of it and pushes it all into QuickBooks or zero magic, right? Um, payment processing. Writing checks is a disaster. E-transfers, we don't know where they're going or who they're going to or what the heck they're for half the time. So having a payment processor is up on my list. Having a way to get paid uh, will also be great. Uh, payroll, uh, you need to have a way of processing payroll and the CRA calculator is probably not the ideal situation. Backups, how are we gonna back up all of these cloud apps? Those of you who, who know me know that I lecture endlessly on backups and security and yada, yada, yada. But it is key in our cloud programs. We cannot be beholden to the thing up there, the server farms and all of that going on to be the only person or the only entity responsible for our data. So make sure you're covering your own rear end with location redundancy and backups. File review. Uh, you can build out a workflow process for file review. There's no doubt about it, but there's a couple apps out there right now that are absolutely killer for file review. And I suggest you take a look 
look at them. So one of them is auto review and one of them is verify IQ. I picked one that I love more. Again, all came down to UI, UX. It was how I felt working in the application. So if you can at all spare a dime, especially if you've got a team, take a look at a file review app. It will change your game, especially again for team. Cash flow forecasting, uh, reporting apps if you want, and then all the myriad of specialty apps. So that's your list of what the specialty of what the CAS applications are. Lead to client work fulfillment. You can start simple and just add a couple of apps in. These two apps will do the trick for lead to client work fulfillment and they'll do it beautifully. Uh, you know, no bias here. <laughs> uh, you can start to then build it out with a few more apps. So let's say type form, acuity and financial sense. Uh, 17 hats, by the way, has a scheduler. That's why I've got that in there. I still believe an online scheduler is going to change the life of you and your client. So you're going to see this in the tech stacks. And if it's not, it's because I forgot to put it in because I could be dopey when I'm doing my decks. Type form acuity Lysio financial sense. Another beautiful tech stack for getting client work done. Lead to client fulfillment. These are the stacks that I really, really love. Typeform, Pipedrive, Acuity, PI, Financial Sense. This is where we're starting to really tie things together with integrator apps. Oh, I got through this quickly. <laughs> uh, so solve your biggest problems with simple solutions. Don't bring in 25,000 apps. Don't test drive every one of them and then abandon them. What are your biggest problems and what do you need to solve them? So if your biggest problem is going back and forth on email, trying to set up meetings right now, go get an online scheduler. If your biggest problem is not understanding your client's needs or your clients aren't happy with you, go get a form builder and start pecking out some questions to get to the root of what the clients think the problem is. If tracking your work, assigning your work, uh, having dependencies, proper start and end dates, if you are not already on financial sense, go get financial sense. <laughs> um, what are some other problems? Oh, payments. If you, are if you are struggling with getting paid by your clients, go get yourself a payment processor so that you can draw the money ahead of time. It's easy for you and it's not easy. Uh, and it's, it's easy for you, it's easy for the clients. No hassle for them either. And so two of my favorites on that are uh, Pluto and Rotessa. You can do PAD agreements. And that means that the money is coming out. And I'm gonna digress on pricing a little bit. I'm no pricing specialist, not by any stretch of the imagination, but I know a lot of people struggle with pricing and it's hard to move off of hourly. So uh, I'm going to do an unpopular in the app world or accounting world thing and say, I get it. It's hard to get off of hourly. And if you're struggling with that and going to fix pricing and going to value pricing, I have a bit of a solution. And that solution looks like this. Have a minimum fee for your client to be your client. Call it the white glove service. Call it the concierge fee. Call it whatever you want and tell them why this fee matters. You cannot wait to hear from your clients. When I see your email come, come in, I'm gonna make sure that I respond within X amount of time. Uh, I'm happy to speak to your accountant, bookkeeper, lawyer on your behalf for a few minutes here and there. I'm gonna update your bank feeds on Monday morning so that you have real time data. Blah, 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 whatever it is. And that white glove service will do two things. Your client is never going to hesitate to call you and you never want a client to be scared to get a hold of you. And if you start to resent the client because they're on hourly and then they're behind in payments and you don't feel like you're getting paid for some of the things that they're doing on the side and yada, 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 it solves the harmony issue. So set a concierge fee, put it on a PAD agreement, 
put in whatever outside apps you're charging them for. So if you are wholesaling some of their apps, go ahead and put in the receipt bank or the Pluto or whatever it is, the payroll. Get all of that on a PAD agreement. And then at the end of every month, send them out the hourly bill. So just pick a concierge fee, get them on that system and do yourself a favor and institute it in your engage re-engagements and make sure your re-engagements are not calendar. Do fiscal re-engagements with your clients so that you aren't doing everybody at once. You don't have one rollout that's going to overwhelm you and you're going to be dealing with, you know, the newness of it for, for all your clients at the same time. So anyways, hopefully that was a little uh, bit of a helpful road trip. Can I just go back to what I, yeah, you know what, we've got, we've got time. So I will go back to what the tech, tech does because that was a swing and a miss on my, my part. I just put up the tech and I'm like, oh, everybody knows what they are. Well, how <laughs> did you all know what they are, right? I know what they are. I deal in this stuff all day, but you're right. And then um, I'll come back, Wade, to your question in a second. Solve your biggest problems. Do not overthink and overwhelm yourself. So what happens is everybody gets stuck. They're like, oh, there's so many choices. Go back to the core. What problems are you trying to solve? Uh, go, well, I've got a spreadsheet for that, but just like write down what the features are that are going to fit with that. Get into one of the Facebook groups and say, hey, these are the things I want to solve. Does anybody know if it has these features? Don't ask for apps mm -hmm. indiscriminately say, these are the features I'm looking for. Don't say, what's your opinion on ClickUp? Because all the ClickUp lovers are going to go in, oh, I love it. And all the ClickUp haters are going to go in, oh, I hate it. I need uh, something that I can create dependencies on the previous task. That, that is a question that will get you to where you want to go. Don't just say, what do you think of Asana? Or what do you think of Financial Sense? Don't do that. Say, I, these are the problems that I have these this is how i think i can fix it with these features or these are the problems that i have what features do i need and then away we go from there P put it down to three apps then because there's a thousand of them just take three that have the features that you want and then go from there test drive them muck about in them decide if you like them otherwise you're just going to overwhelm yourself with all of the choices don't over tech so I talked about this a little bit. This is my summary. So that's why I'm mentioning it again. Don't engage with overcomplicated acts. So we're going to go back and I'm going to show you, but where it was, you went through, uh, there was five apps to tie together. If that's not your gig to tie them together, don't even consider it. It's not going to work for you. Find an app that does more of what you want. Also, some, cat, some apps are so robust that they are virtually impossible to set up. So don't go down that road either. You got to find that balance between is the app so robust that I'm never going to be able to set it up because there's just too many features or is the app, um, anyways, just either way. Okay, I got stuck there. Who hires me to do these things? Who decides that I should be up here talking about any of this stuff is completely beyond me. My dad has a saying, he says, they pay you to speak. He says, I'll pay you to shut up. Um, so how do you feel when you are working in an app? Again, I cannot say enough about UX and UI. Oh, and there's one. So let's go back to some of the uh, apps that we were talking about. So uh, let's, let's go up here. Yeah, Captera. Somebody says captera.com. You're so right, Jamie. That's a great place to check on them. Also that there's a Facebook group called the Workflow Watering Hole. Uh, Tracy has shiny app attention syndrome. That's SAS. And um, okay. I'm glad you brought up Asana. I'm a big Asana fan, hoping that Financial Sense could replace it. Yeah, after my review, I chose not to go with it because I may be wrong here. I wasn't able to make subtasks after the first level of subtasks. So uh, you can uh, you can address that directly, right? Yeah, you can. And, yeah, with, and that is uh, Wade. Oh, yeah. okay, Wade, I'm glad you're loving the 70s references. <laughs> um, okay, what are these apps? 17 Hats is uh, a front end CRM app. Uh, it is uh, for uh for solo uh to um to whatever 
like to medium business for onboarding it, it, because it's got it's got everything it's got online scheduler it's got uh information gathering it's got contracts questionnaires invoices um it's it's got 17 hats literally i think like 25 of them right now uh, it is not a place to get work done if you are uh more than solo it, there's no team aspect to it but if you want a single place to onboard clients contract them it's got custom fields the whole front end is fantastic and then move on to financial sense to get the work done it doesn't have dependencies it doesn't have assign you can't assign it to task to client uh to team members you can't um i love financial sense i've taken now to uh you can email a project into financial sense so it comes into my email and it just goes straight out uh for example a client thought they would be eligible or they should be paying um eht they heard from somebody else who was that's the employer health tax here in canada they thought they should be paying it i i sent it off to financial sense as a project to take a look at because there was a few steps to make sure that they didn't have to be paying it and away we go i was done with it in my inbox wsib whatever the case may be you can send an email off and you're done with it you, you can't do the likes of that in 17 hands so punting off the work to somebody else is not going to happen and punting it from email isn't going to happen type form is the information gathering form that i showed you that i was filling out where sharam's going to get a lecture on branding <laughs> acuity is an online scheduler so that is where uh, anybody can go ahead and schedule a meeting with you. You can also schedule group meetings in it. There's Calendly, there's um, where's some of the other big ones. Anyways, look up, look up online schedulers and those will change your day. Uh, Lysio is a client engagement app. So it, um, it does contracting, it does some client communications, it does, e-signatures yeah e-signatures it's a it's a super smooth experience they've they've really um hit the market in the last couple of months and done some product development in there so that's that's a, a nice one there's an alternative to that that does some of the same things uh and speaks to quickbooks as well and that's something called client hub um and then uh in the last one there's pipe drive that is a crm so that is strictly taking leads and managing the client information. Uh, I think in our world, unless you are completely empire building and you're a, a big organization, Financial Sense has enough CRM value. You can put in your client notes, you can put in your client logins. Um, so as we move along this, this is as the firms get bigger and bigger really is adding in these puzzle pieces. Um, for for the most of us who are probably in this session today, um, financial sense or a combination of 17 hatch financial sense type form, any of those could fill that pipe drive need. Uh, unless you're cycling through clients all the time. Um, that would be if you only do file reviews or something like that, let's say, and you never see the clients again, you need to keep track of all of that. Practice ignition is another way to get paid. So I mentioned um, Rotessa and Pluto as a way to draw the PAD agreements. Practice Ignition does, uh, they, it will do the proposal and capture the payment for you on a recurring basis or a one-off basis, but you have to do them hand in hand. It is a beautiful experience. My tax provider uses pra Practice Ignition and I love being on the end, other end of it. He uses Typeform and Practice Ignition and being on the other end of that is a beautiful experience. Uh, practice ignition though doesn't allow uh, you, you um, that it you can't do the contracting piece without the payment piece. They go hand in hand on on that, and so that's what those applications do. Um, okay, are there any questions? I actually didn't expect to get through that so fast. Did I lose you?
Am I back? Don't go anywhere. Hello, this is all very odd. Hmm. Okay, so this is this is weird. So uh, I guess I'm asking. Maybe I never left. Am I? Am I still live? Oh, okay. That's all so weird. You should see what's happening on my end. All very odd. Okay, so we have. 10 minutes. Uh, I would love to, we can talk about anything you want. We can go ahead on the topics that we're on uh, or whatever it is that, that you want to talk about right now, or, or we can leave class early if that's what everybody wants to do. Sorry for the, uh, the glitch there, but um, I'm, I'm totally open to uh, discussions now. And So, okay. Oh, maybe it was Sharon that uh, that got booted out, not me. This is a really weird session. <laughs> Sorry about that. I got my internet disconnected. I'm using the hotspot on my phone, so <laughs> I don't know how stable it is. Okay. So if I essentially um, we're done. Oh, 26 new messages. So this there, I, everything's coming back here now. So uh, let me just make sure that we've got no questions because I've, I've now left it open to people that they can go ahead and uh, ask anything that they want um, either about financial sense because you're back or about uh, tech stack if you whatever it is you want to ask we've got a few minutes otherwise we'll just you know cut out of class early uh, moving clients to PAD yeah thank you um, so Lanisha says, uh, are you using any, I hope I pronounced that right. Uh, Wade, what's in the Kelly's uh, fun stuff bookmark folder. Um, uh, you have a question about uh, Zapier for any automations. Um, yeah, I use it for a couple of things. I send contact information around from a few different applications. One of the things that I was using, I'm not anymore because I've changed up my methods of it because my client base has changed. I was using it to schedule client folders. Oh, I guess I don't need to share anymore, right? I was using it to schedule uh, client folders being made in um, my Google Drive. So uh, what are some other things? I'd have to look at my 17 hats. This is the thing I forget about when I use uh, Zapier, I mean. Once it's doing things, I'm not doing it anymore. Uh, I've got like a dozen zaps of little things that I don't feel like doing. And for the life of me, I'm sorry, I didn't see that question coming. So I'm not really prepared for it. Um, yeah, moving clients to PAD on the white glove or monthly service, no matter what else is going on with them is game changing. Um, Okay, so Karen, uh, an email blast to my clients. So uh, email blast, you actually can send an email blast to your clients. Uh, you go to the all projects page, you toggle it to the list view and you create a one email workflow. You can then sort by tags and you can click off all of the people that you wanna send the email to. You add the workflow and you can actually do it in in bulk that way. If you want to take that offline, Karen, we can. Or you can actually look it up. 17 Hats has some great resources on that. Other than that, um, there's a number of different um, 
email blast ones. Are you using MailChimp, Sharam? No, I don't use MailChimp. I use Autopilot. Autopilot, right. I'm using Squarespace. There is an active campaign. Uh, there's, they're, there's, they're really good too. Yeah, yeah. My my buddy uh, is using Active Campaign. He loves it. Uh, a lot of people use Mailchimp, so there's something great about it. I have to be honest when I'm talking about. I have to be honest. Like I'm going to stand here and tell some lies. <laughs> um, that this comes back to UX, UI, and being overwhelmed by the app and then not using it. I actually didn't send out email campaigns like I should have been because I was using Mailchimp and I didn't love Mailchimp and I never could get the hang of it. I know it's not that complicated, but it's all about how your mind works. And so once I switched to Squarespace, I, I now have a number of successful email campaigns. Well, that's a strong word. I have no idea whether they're successful. I have now happily started sending out email campaigns no problem at all. And it was just a switch to an app that had the same features. I just like using it better. It's such an important thing. Um, how frequently do you email your clients? Well, so obviously in financial sense, you can email, uh, are we, now I don't know if we're talking about email blasts or if we're talking about um, trying to get your clients to get stuff done. Um, if it's if it's trying to get stuff email blasts okay i'm going to start on the topic that i was already on though uh communicating with your clients in financial sense can be either scheduled because it's part of the task or the mm -hmm. project that you're recurring um or you can just go ahead and request something from them and that basically means you need to get stuff done and you need to create consistency in the language around it email blasts that's i i have no marketing advice on email blasts i'm starting off weekly but then I'm going to decide if that's going to be a pain and I'm going to move it to something else. Um, oh, there you go. There's a feature, Sharam. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's yeah, a cool yeah. feature. So if everybody's not in the chat, uh, 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 there's been a feature request on sending updates on how far they are along on a tax return. Um, OK. okay. I'm curious to hear from uh, uh, some of the people listening in. Where where do you think you've had the most success in like finding app recommendations or you know talking about these are the problems I'm facing? Like, what do you use to solve these? Is it the Facebook groups? Is it Captera? Is it Apps.com? Where have where have you had success in like doing that research and getting those valuable insights? Facebook groups. Well, yeah. kind of <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Atta girl, Tracy. This is why I love you um yeah facebook groups i will say captera is a good one i like all these answers to kelly's group though thank you um <laughs> captera is a an interesting one um do you do research in captera me yeah uh yeah i do i typically look up a lot of the apps in captera we i was curious though you know i haven't heard that many people say apps.com um in the qbo app store yeah you know it's interesting that uh so brooke just said that she looks in the qbo app store i am constantly amazed by how many people i direct there and they had no idea about it so hmm. yeah uh it, it's it's one of those interesting things it's 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 not and it kind of is for me if I'm looking for an, an accounting app, because the nice thing about pulling from the app store, if it's like a specialty app, this is where I use it for the specialty apps. Um, there are a lot of apps that integrate with QuickBooks, but some of the ones that can change your data, like inventory mm -hmm. apps or some of these um, have not actually been vetted by QuickBooks. Uh, and inventory being the big one and the other one that i would look at is job costing i would only be using an app that is on the app store when it is going to change the data in my file so adding an invoice or pulling a, a, a line item like a product and service that's one thing altogether. that's that's yeah. not an issue 
Um, but if, if it's going to change the data in my file, I am not going to put it on a file unless it is actually on the app store. And I'm, I'm really involved with Intuit. So I know that there's a lot of distrust around some of the things that they're doing. But it, when it comes to the outside applications, it is quite a rigorous process to, to be on it is. the app store. <laughs> it takes yes, months. As you, months. As you know, <laughs> yes. So if there's one thing you can trust them, it's 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 the app store will the apps still screw things up possibly depends on what kind of qbo file if it's a legacy file if it's a new file how screwed up the data in the file already is it could screw it up more i would never ever add an app that is going to change the data in a quickbooks file unless i have a uh, run a backup in in uh, rewind um yeah so i think I think we are at the end run. I do apologize for the middle part. You weren't here, here, Shram. We had quite the fun little adventure going where I thought I was gone. Oh yeah, I, I, I thought I thought to, you were gone too. <laughs> I'm trying to find the panelist link, and I've got my email open, so we may have to pull a little piece out of the recording, and uh, and away <laughs> we go. That part got to be quite funny. Um, but I don't have any great, there was no great secrets in there. Um, okay, so everybody, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Me, I think, Shram and I, but Shram, I'm going to let you end it here, right? Yeah, well, there is one question. They're asking about the name of your Facebook group. Oh, uh, it's the Workflow Watering Hole. Um, so literally the Workflow Watering Hole. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so yeah. Um, anyway. Yeah, I just want to thank everyone for joining us. This was a great session. Thank you, Kelly. And if anyone has any questions about financial sense, you can go to the website, reach out to us, the little blue icon. Um, glad to do a demo, see if we can help solve some of these problems you may be having with your, you know, managing your internal client work. But thanks everyone for joining us. Okay, thanks so much. I'll see y'all later. See everyone.